carriage. Everybody stand the for the pledge, please. <laughs> so <laughs> Take the roll. O'Connor. Here. Morset. Here. Holmes. Here. McCormick. Here. Weber. Here. Hoggett. Here. Hall. Sorry. Here. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. All right. Uh, we take comments from citizens now. Is there anybody that would like to say anything? Anybody have any comments? Yep. Anybody have any comments? Izzy, do you have something to say? <laughs> Big things come in small packages, and that's very true for this little firecracker. I have a rare fever syndrome. Sometimes it makes me sick, but it never gets me down. I raise money for children in the hospital by signing suckers for sick kids. I use money to pile on baby dolls and race cars. I have a trampoline jumping, bought for a loving fashionista who loves to dance and make people smile. Though I'm little, I am fierce. From Hudson, Wisconsin, remember this little peanut? I'm Izzy Kramer. <laughs> 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 Today you are you, that's true than true. There's no one alive who is your than you. <laughs> Dr. Seuss was a really smart guy. He knew that being yourself is the best thing to be. I am lucky to be what I am. Thank goodness I'm not just a clam or ham or a jar of gooseberry jam. His rhymes are silly, but the words are true. That person's a person, no matter how small. Imagine how boring it would be if we were all the same. There'd be no cat in the hat, or Sam A.M., or Horty Hughes a Who. We'd all just be saying one or thing two. So in the words of Dr. Seuss, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Izzy. That's awesome. Anybody want to follow that? How old are you, Izzy? Six. Just turned six on Saturday. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> good job. Awesome. Amazing. Nice job. Very good job. <laughs> All right, any other citizen comments? Any other citizen comments? Any other citizen comments? We'll close this portion of the agenda and move on to the consent. To approve the minutes of the regular meeting of November 20th, 2017, to approve claims in the amount of $361,869.51. Contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and successful completion of the background check to approve the issuance of five regular operator licenses for the period of December 5th, 2018 to June 30th, 2019 to Ryan Waterhouse, Justin Carpenter, Taylor Stensgard, James Trainer, and Carol Trainer. Also to approve the issuance of two temporary operator licenses for the hockey alumni game on December 23rd, 2017. Um, to Carrie Hansen and Brent Hansen. I should say that should say 2017, December 5th, 2017. Um, to approve the issuance of a, a special event permit for the Hudson Hot Air Fair Torchlight Parade and the Hot Air Balloon Launch events on January 26th through the 28th, 2018. To approve the EP Rock Elementary Foot uh, Race on five on May 5th, 2018, from 9 to 10.30 a.m., to approve no parking on Fillmore Street between 12th and 11th Street, to approve the Halos of St. Croix Valley 5K Fun Run Walk on August 4th, 2018, to approve the letter of understanding for impound services with the Animal Humane Society for 2018, to approve the appointment of election inspectors for the 2018 to 2019 term, to authorize the police chief to fill the open patrol officer position from the current eligibility list. 
to purchase two sport utility squads, uh, Explorers from Hudson Ford in the amount of 49,800. To approve the application for a secondhand jewelry dealer license for Roy Leak at J.R. Hawkrick at 210 Locust Street, and to approve the application for Brian Aspen of the Old Coin Shop at 521 Second Street for the period of January 1st, 2018 through to December 31st, 2018, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city, and to approve a temporary Class B beer license for Hudson Blue Line Club for an event on December 23rd, 2017. Move to approve. Second. second. Got a motion second to approve. Roll call. Morissette. Yes. Holmes. Yes. McCormick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Hoggett. Yes. Paul. Yes. Motion's approved. Uh, discussion of possible action to approve ordinance 19-17 amending chapter 187 of the city of Hudson city code to prohibit the unlawful use of drones. Long awaited ordinance. Uh, Mr. McCormick requested. Catherine, do you have any highlights? Did you uh, basically just adapts the statute by reference, both the definition of drone and um, what the statute prohibits. So it's pretty straightforward. How, can, go ahead. My, my question is how, how do we enforce this? Where's the, did our chief leave? He might be out in the hall. Oh. I mean, if I see a phone we drone them? in my yard, then what? Can we track them down? Yeah. The Usually it's, I mean, just in general, ordinances are enforced pursuant to complaints. Enforcing um, the drone ordinance, Marty. Enforcing the drone ordinance. Yep. How are we going to? How are we going to enforce the drone ordinance? Or just like we do any other complaint we get. I'll just <laughs> kneel on the scene. <laughs> um, if we get a complaint, we'll have to go and investigate it, try to find out where the drone was at, take witness statements, and if we can prove that the person was in violation of the ordinance, we'll issue them a municipal order citation and have them report to court or have them pay the fine, whatever that is. So no real difference than any other complaint? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, local ordinance-wise, yes. Right. If we were to do it through the state, we would have to write up a notice to appear, have it go in front of the district attorney. He'd have to put us up, you know, what up charges. This way, it's just write them a ticket and they can show up in court. Uh, my second question then would be if I threw a handful of rocks at a drone in my backyard and it broke it, would I be liable? Well, that, that'd be a civil question. I'd ask that person down at the other end of the I table. Know, I know that's, say, that's a strange. private <laughs> issue, you know, not a municipal. In your backyard, it was probably issue. mine. Yes. <laughs> you mean uh, self-help? It's called self-help. Self-help? <laughs> I'm just curious, what a, do we well, do? Well, like, I'm serious when I say that's a private issue, not a municipal issue. Oh, I see. Um, okay. That would be between um, probably the two, either the private property owner and the drone owner, unless there was some sort of aggravation and some incident. But it's not something the city would, unless they... I don't know if there's something in our ordinances prohibiting damage to private well, it, property. Well, it, it could be if if the drone, say you start throwing the rocks and you hit it when it's not on your prop, over your property anymore, now you've got criminal damage to property. So it could be that way, and I would suggest not doing it. Okay. <laughs> well, I was just asking. You know, <laughs> not that I'm going to do it. I just It's curious because you hear a lot of people that don't right. like drones. Uh, so if it were flying in my yard, though, right. this is you're saying it's on private property. So then it's a matter of... That's oh, trespassing. Then. What's the ceiling height on that? I, I, don't, I, I don't know what the... I don't the, know. Because airspace... I think under this think ordinance, is, they're talking about doing it it's as an invasion of privacy type thing. Right. Okay. So ahead. if there's some drone delivering a package and they are misidentifying the property, they're not... You know, things. There's going to be things that are outside the scope of this ordinance. All right. And and again, the, even the kids have the small drones that fly that don't even have cameras on them that might only have a short range that might end up in somebody's yard too. We have to look at what the intent of the person flying the drone is. Well, everybody knows why we were trying to do this because of the complaints that several citizens made about their neighbor's drones appearing in their yard and then them 
neighbor telling him, I saw you were doing this last weekend, and that's, that's, that shouldn't be the way. Right. We need something to enforce. Sure. And that's what this is yeah. designed for. Now, when I get a hold of the judge, what kind of fine would you like to see her impose? Uh, I mean, the process think, is... Do we think, think about that, or do we have to make a decision tonight? Well, the process is the judge sets the bond, which is what they pay if they want to just pay the citation. The fine that's established, or potential fine that's established in the ordinance is between twenty-five and 1500 I mean, by code, for the first offense, and what was it, 50 and yeah. 2,000, some for a second offense. But if they just want to pay the citation and be done with it, that's the amount the judge gets to set, and then it comes back to the council. But you may want it, it can't be less than 25, you know, the minimum, and it can't be more than the maximum. 25 is the maximum? Fine. No, no, 25 is the minimum. Minimum fine. What's the fine for like being a peeping Tom or something like that? Do we have a fine for that? Well, um, let's just say regular disorderly conduct is about $120 all said and done with the fine and the, the court costs and everything else that goes with it. I mean, that kind of goes with that. Right? That's about a $50 to a $75 fine. Because every fine has about $50 in court worth fees. Worth of court it. fees yeah. and jail assessment fees and so forth, correct? We can review the bond schedule at a later date. Yeah, when it comes, I, I guess it's just nice to be able to give the judge some idea if right. she's interested, and then she'll set it, and it comes to the council for approval, right. and then you can actually look at it and decide yes or no. Some of our higher fines are like uh, shoplifting is over 200, and about 225, 250, possession of marijuana, drug paraphernalia, they're all up in the 200, so if that's something that the council would like to see. Um, a fine come out of just kind of give me an indication. I can let the judge know that's what your wishes are. What, 200? Are you talking now inclusive of the various costs? Yes. Okay. So she'd have to. Then you have to work back. Right. I mean, just that. So about means 200. Seems more in line 200. with 120, yeah. the disorderly or whatever. Yeah. That seems to be more in line with that. It seems to me more in line with the disorderly, not yeah. the, so what would you say, 120 or something? So we're right around that 120, so the fine would be somewhere around 50 to $75, oh. somewhere in there. With more teeth in it, they're not likely to do it again. Well, I, I guess I'm finding it challenging to know that, you know, you, it might be your drone, but what if somebody else was flying it? Or, I mean, I this is all, you know. Just like any other thing, you're responsible for the control of what you own, I would think. Right. Well, it'd, it'd be like a vehicle. If, a, if I let you use my vehicle and you go intoxicated, I'm not responsible because you're drunk. Right. So I think you're the insurance operator of the drone would be your car responsible. Insurance would be well, it probably <laughs> <You> actually are. <laughs> <laughs> Negligent and trust me. Yeah. But uh, anyways, so what do we want to, what do we want to do for a fine? Is there any consideration to how tough it is to track these people down? It, it can be quite... I would think quite, it would be very quite, difficult to track them down, and therefore I would think the fine should probably be a little higher because of the resources that might be involved in trying to, trying to get them. So if the fine was 100, a hundred, if the fine itself was 100, I guess after fees it would be like probably 150, 160, correct? Right around that area, correct. Uh, just throwing out a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> well, I gave my suggestion, so we guys can do it. Or do you want, the other option is Sue looks at it and sends something, you know, she can make a determination. Of, well, she will. I mean, this way Marty has some right. idea of what you're thinking, and so we don't have to go back and forth between the council and the judge. So somewhere between Some 100, 100 and 200. 200, it seems like. And Sue can okay. maybe make a determination on yeah. the seriousness in her mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's just arrive at 150 as a total. Does that work? Including court costs or not? Yeah, including. So 100. Ish. Yeah. So 100 -ish. we can back it off. And, right. Okay. They'd like to see the fine total come out to about 150 somewhere in that range. Okay. okay. I can do that. Does that sound good to yeah, you? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. I say more, but that's just 
I would, lean, well, I would well, lean towards more as well. We can ask it to be, I mean, the okay. fine goes up for a second 200. offense. Okay. How much are you? <laughs> 200. Including 200. 200. Yeah. 200. Mm. All right, then let's do 200. Did you hear that, it's Marty? A, you know, recommendation to the court. And, then, and Sue may think it's too much or not enough. Yeah, then. right. So send it back. Oh, right. I guess on the scope of what are we trying to accomplish with it, we're trying to prevent it from even happening. Yeah. Yep. We Deterrent. can't address the, what has already happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Somebody going to make a motion? I'll move to suspend the rules. We have to do that. Yep, we can you pass have it, to right? Do that second. If you wanted to opt it today. Got a motion, second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette. Yes. Elms. Yes. McCormick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Hoggett. Yes. Hall. Yes. Uh, motions approved. The rules are suspended. Uh, move to approve ordinance 19-17, amending chapter 187 of the City of Hudson City Code to prohibit the unlawful use of drones. Second. Got a motion, a second. Discussion? Um, one question I have for you, Catherine, mm -hmm. is, and it's beyond the scope of this, is there an opportunity to potentially set up a fee structure when it comes to the use of professional drones for professional video? That would be outside of the scope of this, but I'm wondering yeah, I'm if there's sure a precedent. You Google. may want to put it on a Google Earth. agenda to discuss. I mean, you're so, so if someone wants to do this professionally, do we correct? Do we give them is a there, permit could like be any a, other permit? Right. Just is there an opportunity to do up that? regulation of drones. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's beyond the scope of this. Yes, I just wanted to throw it out there. And I think we'd need to have it on another agenda. Aren't professional to, drones yep. regulated by the FAA? They are. And then, um, like, if you're on a private property, like we, um, some of the schools that, where our products are installed, we fly drones around just to get shots of the finished product. Right. But they're, they're saying it's okay to do that. Would the city need to be involved or not? And so I guess that's some of the things. That's about. what would need to be discussed. Okay. I just think it would be an opportunity to... Meeting. This is talking about the unlawful yes. use of right. drones. Right. Right. Thanks for muckying up the water, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> We're smooth, right? Yep. <laughs> Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on a letter of engagement with Ellers approving the phase one feasibility analysis of tax increment district number six in the city of Hudson. Mike. Thank you. Um, We've got a number of projects in various stages of development or planning uh, downtown, um, some high profile projects some smaller ones. Uh, the city also understands that we've got some costs associated or some costs coming down the road with implementation of the um, waterfront vision study and then the reconstruction of Second Street in 2021. So um, at this point, staff's recommending moving forward with the letter of engagement with Ellers um, to look at the feasibility of a TIF district downtown. How big or small the district is will really be defined by the projects in it, um, as well as uh, meetings that we'll have with the other taxing jurisdictions and the joint review board. So um, Sean with Ellers is here to answer any questions. I can answer questions. Like I said, if, if we don't wanna move some forward with something, we can stop at any time um, it's not committing the city to uh, the establishment of a TIF district but it, it certainly is something that staff would recommend moving forward with at this time Mike the uh, the approximately twelve thousand dollar cost is borne by the landowner it's a good point yep so the pre-development agreements that the council's seen the last few meetings um, the way that I have approached that is that the developers of these projects put down a deposit in the pre-development agreement that pays for um, the cost of the establishment of a district so up front this analysis piece the 4700 that I'm looking for approval tonight um, after uh, we'll have another pre-development agreement probably two um, and the next council agenda, the first meeting in, in January, which will pay for the, the entirety of, of this first phase. And then the, the next question is, what's the typical time period? You, maybe there is no typical, but what would, is the time period you expect it to be? You know, I, with the holidays in there, I think this one, I think typically quickest you can get it done in is about 60 days. And then I would say, I'd say 90 
um, all said and done. This one's a little bit more involved than say the, the dog track TIF district is in that you're dealing with multiple different properties. How do you assemble them so they're contiguous? Um, so we'll have some a little bit more uh, a little bit more involved in terms of how we how we map it and, and the time so and for clarification when we uh, if we create the TIF district it could be used for infrastructures within that district is that correct the monies yes yep for improvements mm -hmm. yeah. there's a buffer on that too isn't there wasn't there I'm not... there and Sean's probably the, the best one <laughs> Yeah, there's, um, to directly answer that question, infrastructure projects in the district could be eligible, assuming we put them in the project plan, and projects that are outside the boundaries of the district, but within a half mile of the district are also potential eligible expenses as well. Okay. Yeah. That covers a lot. And if we were to establish it, could it go from one end of the park all the way to the other end of the park continuously? Yes, yeah, the, the restrictions would be the, the uh, contiguous nature of mm -hmm. the boundary of the tax increment district. The other restriction is uh, citywide, we can't have more than 12% of the value of the city in tax increment districts, but that's really not a restriction here given that the, you only have the one district and uh, the size of Hudson. Uh, so I, I think it's really just a contiguous boundary is what we're limited to. Okay, and including like burying uh, power lines? As an eligible expenditure? Yeah. Yeah, that would be a possible eligible expenditure. Yes. Hmm. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? I'll move we approve the engagement letter for tax increment district number six. I'll second. A motion is second to approve. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sean. Uh, that's it for the agenda. Uh, announcements. Uh, we have a special meeting coming up Thursday, 12-7, and uh, to deal with the uh, Hanley, Hanley Road discussion. Question on that. Are we going to have any material ahead of time to review, or is this going to be a... No, as far as I know, the, the only thing that you have is the issue sheet. The actual presentation will happen on Thursday. You can certainly contact Tom Sifko mm -hmm. prior. My understanding from Tom is that it isn't ready yet? No. Is that right? They're meeting with, with Glenn at SEA or tomorrow morning. Um, but if you have questions prior to that meeting, just let me know. And if, if Glenn has anything prepared, I can be sure to, to send that out. Or if you have specific questions you'd like me to ask Glenn prior to the meeting, I can do that as well. OK. Um, there is no meeting. On December 18th, uh, due to this room being set up for the special election on December 19th. And I think Devin will cover that in a little bit. Uh, and that's it for me. For those of you uh, that I don't get a chance to see uh, Thursday, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I hope everybody has a safe and uh, fun holiday. Devin? You too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, the election on the 19th, the ballots arrived today. There's going to be kind of a tight frame between the, because we'll have December, January, February, April. So, but the ballots are here. So if everybody wants to vote absentee, they can do that here at City Hall through the December, next Friday, right? So, um, December 15th. Through Correct. December 15th, the Friday before the election. Mm -hmm. Polling sites will be the same as they always are. All of them will be open. Um, we had toyed with the idea of potentially consolidating, but we just decided it'd be easier just to leave everything the way it was rather than confuse people. <laughs> the general election will be on January 16th, and then we'll have our regular elections in February and April. Um, City Hall will be closed the 25th and 26th, and then January 1st and 2nd, except on January 2nd, I will be here for any election paperwork because the state doesn't care that we're closed on the 2nd. That's the deadline for filing paperwork. So I, I'll be here to do that, but otherwise city offices will be closed that day as well. And we'll have signs, we'll put it on the website and everything. So that's it, thank you. Anybody else? I had one request for a re, uh, sign ordinance to be on the agenda for the next meeting, so I guess we're waiting until January now. Yeah, I said, well, I'll put it, we'll, we'll discuss it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. 
Anybody else? Motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Got a motion, second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank